For this model here, we're just going to be using tiling textures. So we won't be making a high poly and a low poly and baking things out. We just need a model, UV unwrap, and then map the textures. For the main model here, it's just a I-beam kind of shape that's crossed. It has a few connecting rectangular prisms, another rectangular prism in the center. And that's just going to have a metal material tiling on it. Now for the barbed wire here, what I do is I will make the base barbed wire model. And so the way this works is we have two planes here and the barbed wire material will be mapped across both of them. And the reason for this by going to material mode is that when I'm looking at the barbed wire from this angle, I can see it. And when I'm looking at this angle, I can see it. If we just had a single flat plane, our barbed wire would be completely invisible from the other angle. So you want these to be seen from all over. So it looks like there's actually quite a bit of barbed wire in the scene. And then that will just get arrayed and then mapped to a curve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the modeling process for this. All right, I'm in a new blank blender scene. Before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and delete all the default here, and I'm going to change my steps a little bit so I can get rid of my timer down here so I don't need that. Now the first thing I do when I do any Blender project is I set my scale depending on what engine I'm going to. For the example that I'm going to be going to Unreal Engine, but you can go to whatever game engine you prefer. So on the right here, if I go to the Scene tab, I can go down to Unit Presets. I'm going to change the preset to centimeters. And this will be the same you would want to set this to if you're going to either Unity or Unreal Engine. And you'll notice everything kind of zoomed in here. So if I back out, things kind of clip and disappear. So if we hit N, we can go to our clips here. So what I do is go to the end here, type one, then put five zeros. So one, two, three, four, five. And then usually the clip is start clipping here is fine. That will affect how close your camera is when things start to clip. and can also change how geometry draws in front of one another. But anyway, the squares here are each one meter by one meter. So I want this barbed wire track to be two meters upon X and about two meters tall. So a little bit taller than a person. So let's go ahead and make the I-beam we'll use. So I want the actual cross to be about one meter high. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and spawn in a standard cube. Hold tap G to move, then Z, then hold down control and move it up. So now I know it's at the one meter mark. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and just scale this down. And I actually don't prefer to have my gizmo on screen, so I'm going to go down here and just turn that off. But you can leave it on if you like. So I'm going to go ahead and make this into a kind of tall beam shape. So I'm going to hit scale, then I'm going to hit shift Z. When you hold down shift and blender, it will limit whatever axis you hit. So I'm going to put that to about here. And I'm going to make it a bit thinner or wider, and I can change this up more later. So now what I'm going to do is put this onto 3D cursor. So I want to put this bar straight down to zero. So I'm going to go to face, click that, hit scale, Z, zero. And then I'm going to move this up just a bit. Somewhere around here. Uh, let's go for here. Because so I'm actually going to want this to be a bit longer on the bottom for standing up. Though you could have it precise and it would look just fine too. All right, so I'm gonna hit GX and put that over here. So I'm gonna have a cross going this way and then another cross on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is hit RX and I need a reset to medium point down here. Let's do RX and Let's see about there should be good. All right. Now what I will do is I can go ahead and keep modeling this further. But what I like to do is go ahead and have them place and model one why it edits the other three. And the way you can do that is instead of hitting shift D to duplicate, 
you can hit Alt D. Now when you hit Shift D on an object, it will duplicate the object and the object data. And over on the right here, you have an object data panel saying what this is referencing. So we can go ahead and rename this object data to iBeam if you want, though I don't always rename it, but it can help if you have a lot of objects. So essentially the object data is where your vertex and UV information is stored, but the actual object data is just a representation of location, rotation, and scale. So if we use Alt-D, so Alt-D, that looked like a standard duplication, so I'm going to hit RZ 180, and I'm going to move this to the right a bit. But you can see, while these are two different objects up here in the hierarchy, they both have the exact same object data here. If I were to use Shift D, you can see this just got a unique piece of object data. Since these share the same, when I go into edit mode, it's going to edit both of them at the same time is very useful. All right, so I'm gonna go down here and have these clip into the ground a bit. You can imagine when setting up this kind of barbed wire fence, it would be stuck into the mud and ground just a bit to stay up. So I'm gonna go to about here. All right, now to add the actual eye shape to it, I'm going to put a loop here, hit Control B, put that about there. And then the same thing here, and hit control V. All right. Now then, I'm going to select here, hold it down, Alt and left click. I'm going to hold an Alt, Shift and left click here. And now I should have almost everything that I actually don't want selected. So now I'm going to hit control I to invert and then hit X and then faces to delete those. All right. Next, I'm gonna go back to vertex selection. Grab these two down here. Grab these two up here and hit F. Same thing on the other side. And hit F. Then I'm going to grab here and up here. Hit F to fill. And just finish this up here. And we have one more to do. All right, so it's like these two. And build. So now I've got our basic shape here and we can go ahead and mirror this. So I'm gonna add in a mirror modifier right here. And I could move the origin to the center here that have this mirror across X. So what I like to do in a lot of Blender scenes is go down here to a new layer and add in an empty and call that the mirror reference empty or just mirror empty. So you'll notice it's very small here since so we're working inside centimeters now. So it's exactly one centimeter in radius. So I'm gonna put this to a hundred to have it be one meter. All right. So now I'm just gonna call this mirror underscore empty. And then later when I'm in my doom embodying process, I can keep the origin where I want it while still referencing the center. So you can just click mirror empty and now it's mirrored. And instead of adding there, I can just click this one, click here, hit control L to link and do modifiers. And that doesn't actually link it, but it copies the modifiers over. So now these are both using these modifiers. Next thing I'll do is hit Shift A, and then we're gonna add in a cube here. And I'm gonna hold Shift X, so I can scale it just upon Y and Z. I'll put that about here, and then move that up. And Shift X again, let's get down a little bit more. All right. Now then, we have about the base model here and can get started with doing our barbed wire. Then later we'll come back and we can UV unwrap this once we have it where we want. Uh, first, let's move this just a little bit more out so it's not clipping so heavily. And I'm going to want to scale this upon X, so in there's not clipping out. All right, I'm happy with that. 
So I'll see you in the next segment here in a moment, and we'll do the barbed wire. All right, we're ready to start on the barbed wire. So I've just gone to the second layer here. On the first layer, we have our original barbed wire kind of trap set. So I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna take a look at the textures I downloaded from Game Textures. In the original scene, I had used the razor wire, but on this one, I think I'm going to use the more Western-styled barbed wire like these. So, we aren't going to import the entire material into Blender unless you want to. The reason for that is, is I just don't intend to render it out at all. I just need something that is of reference. So I'm going to import the base color and the opacity. So I'm going to click back on Blender here, and I'm going to do a few things. First, I'm going to open up a new panel here and put this to the UV image editor. And I'm going to move that up, turn the top one into a node editor. All right. So I'm also going to go another layer down here real quick and just add a flat plane. And then I'm going to hit T into, uh, to generate UVs. All right. So now I hit tab, I have UVs on this. I usually like to work with a square here when I add in things like trims, and you'll see why in a moment. So before I add material, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my engine over to Cycles Render. So I prefer working with the Cycles node setup materials. So now that I'm in Cycles, I'm going to hit new material. I'm just gonna call this Western Bar Fire. All right. I'm going to delete this node and add in a principled BSDF, though that really doesn't matter in this case. And to add in my two textures, I'm going to just open up the window where I have them stored, drag in the base color, and then go back to that and drag in the opacity. All right. Now that I'm going to plug this into base color, plug this into surface, And I can swap out the base color here in the opacity to see things more clearly. I think what I'll do is add in the mix shader here at the end. Let's go to mix shader. I'm going to go ahead and go into material view here so you can see what it's going to look like. I just want to be able to see this easily in the 3D viewport while I'm modeling. And then I should be able to take this and use it to change the mix on this between a transparent shader and the actual principal shader. So let's move this down. And you notice I changed the non-color data, which isn't actually too important for the opacity since this is two straight colors, but it's a good habit to get into. So let's unhook that, plug that into the bottom, and that is what we want. And we can also add in a transparent or translucent shader here. Uh, I believe it's transparent. Let's plug that in. Yes, and that makes it white, and I kind of find that a little bit easier to see. So now we can decide on what barbed wire we want to use. And I think I want to either use the center one here or this one on the right. So the way I'm going to pick out and use it is I'm going to select it, hit tab, then hit control R to put a loop cut. And you'll notice it's going to distort the UV as I move this some here. But if I left click, then don't do anything else and go to the bottom left here, I can tell it to correct UVs. Now if I had tap GG to slide it, it will also keep the UVs corrected. So I'm going to move this to hmm, select right about here. And then I'm going to hit control R again and slide this to be right here. So now I kind of have the trim that I want to use. So I'm going to select this, and I'm actually going to select this whole object and hit Shift D and move it to the layer up. So what I'm going to do is be deleting the other planes, but I may want to go back and choose some others. All right, so now we're on the new layer here, top one, not the bottom one. I'm gonna hit Tab and select that, hit Control I, X, then Faces. And now we have just this linear tiling trim. So in out of edit mode, I'm gonna hit Shift, Control, Alt C and then do origin to geometry. Now I'll put the origin right at the center. I'm going to hit Shift S and do selection to cursor. And now I have it directly in the center. 
The next thing we need to do is scale this down just a little bit in accordance with our structure because this is just way too big. But before I do that, I'm going to slide it up on X just once. And then I'm going to scale it down upon the 3D cursor. And I'm doing this because I'm going to want to be scaling this up and down, keeping its origin in the exact same spot. So actually, I'm going to want to hit Shift S or Shift Control Alt C and move the origin of the 3D cursor now to keep it in the center here. And this will be important later for when we use our curve modifier. So now I can scale this down. Now I'm going to put it to about here for now. Or I'm going to use more exact values. I'm going to about scale 0.5. And scale by 0.5 again. So I think that's the size I'll use for the most of the barbed wire. Or maybe I'll up it just a little bit. And now I'm going to hit Control A and clear its rotation and scale. All right, I'm going to go back to the next tab. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close a lot of this so I have more room to see. And I'm going to Go ahead and go into edit mode here and select it, hit shift D, then hit RX90. So now we have this kind of T pattern here, and that's so when we have the camera like this in game, we see the barbed wire, and we have the camera like this, we'll still see the barbed wire. So no matter what angle you're looking at, you're going to see barbed wire somehow. Okay, so next we just need to add an array modifier. And it's currently already set to the correct distance. We're going to want to merge these together here at the end. And I'm going to add in a few cuts here, exactly three. We need to add a little bit of geometry when we're taping this around a curve. If you want to optimize the mesh later some, after you've placed them, you can go and select individual loops you don't need. So there's not quite as many. But the geometry should still be pretty light. All right. Now, let's go ahead and hit Shift A and add our curve in. So I like to use the path curve. And you will notice that when we are working inside centimeters, you can't really see the arrows that easily, sadly, on curves. Something I've found to be a bit of a pet peeve for me using Blender. But what we'll go ahead and do is go back to here. And I'm going to want to change the type of count this to fit a curve length. So I'm going to select here and select here. And now it will always be whatever size the curve is. But we also need to add in a curve modifier to get to hook on to the curve. So same thing again, select nerves path. All right, and I think this is good. Yes, so now you can see it will hook on to the curve path we move around here. And this is going to make it very easy for placing this now. <clears throat> and we're actually only going to be placing a few this way. In a moment here, I'm going to use the add on to generate the spirals. So I'm going to hold down shift and add on this other layer here. And I'm going to click first this and then the path. So let's select it off here. And then I'm going to hit shift D. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to keep one here at the beginning so I can go back and edit that. And remember how I moved this back to the beginning and put the origin right at the end? That's because for the modifier to work, you need to make sure your nerves path and your mesh have their origin in the exact same place. So I moved that nerves path over. I was in edit mode when I did that. All right, let's go back to material mode so we can see our wire and what we're working with. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is move it over here. And I need to go back to medium point. Right in the I'm going to scale it down while I'm edit mode. All right. I think I'm going to have this one kind of just draped along here. And I will have some floating pieces here for a moment, but it'll look fine once we add in our loops. I'm just hitting E here to extrude these and we'll be able to go and correct these. All right, so it's a GY, move this around here. And if you're trying to be really accurate to get these to kind of be right where the mesh is, 
you need to look more at the texture rather than the model. Because the edge texture is what it's going to look like where it's resting on things in game. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these points and hit scale Y zero to make it straight. And then I'm going to move this along the line to be about right here. Okay. Let's move these over. And whoops, I had multiple select there, so I'm going to control Z and scale just this one. Okay. If this, I may have this drape down and then kind of loop around. So I'm going to just shift the Z here to keep it just on these planes. Then I'm going to go back in and move these some more. Um, let's give it a little bit of more relax. We can add some more geometry later if we want to, to kind of help this a bit. But we will be able to go and edit this some more. Okay, and I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and go back and start adding in the main cores. That's what's going to take up most of the geometry here. It gives a better idea of how things are going to look. All right, so I'm actually going to move this over to the third layer here. And that will be kind of my inventory of the barbed wire. So when you get a new one, I'll go over here and grab it. So I'm going to select just the mesh this time, hit Shift D and move that back over. And actually, I'm going to move this back to a new, new layer again and show you this add I'm going to be using to generate the coils. So if we go to File and then User Preferences, wait for the load, we should have an add-on for curves called Add Extra Objects. So go ahead and toggle that on, then hit Save User Settings to make sure it's on. And now when we hit shift and go to curve, you notice I have these curve spirals here. So I'm going to get arc median. And you notice it's not there. If you're in the default blender units, you'll see it immediately. But once again, we've changed our scale of units down. So I'm going to go over here and change the radius from one centimeter to one meter. So let's change that to 100 centimeters, which equals one meter. Now we can actually see our curve. Currently it just looks like a circle. But if we change the height, you can see now it scales up. So let's put it to about 50. And then we can increase the number of turns here. And as you spike back out here, you can see how this looks. Pretty neat. So I'm going to want this to be about a two to one ratio here. And we can add this some more. So I'm gonna put this about here, and this is a bit denser than what I did before. So you can have this have less loops if you would like to make it look a little bit less dense and save on geometry. So I'm good with that. And you notice it already put its origin at the correct spot here in the center, which is the same origin in this. So now if I click on my geometry here and then change and fit from the first nurse path to this, it will should automatically fit onto it. And here we are. Now something you're noticing is the shading is hard. So we're going to want to click on our geometry and hit smooth shade. And I actually need to go back to the other layer and do the same thing on that one too. And do smooth shading. All right, let's go back. Now you could move both the nerves and this curve together. And that way you would be able to kind of keep them in sync and edit as much as you like. But then you have a lot of duplicate nerve objects and meshes. So sometimes I'm doing things like this, I like to just go ahead and apply it and move it over and then just scale the mesh some. But I'm going to go ahead and hold on shift and go back over here and compare their sizes. All right. So let's select these and go ahead and scale it down. And actually I'm going to scale it from the curves perspective. So I'm going to go with curve and edit mode and then go to 3D cursor and just scale this down. And I want it to be at about two meters, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and we'll trim off that little bit there in a moment. We can actually scale it some to help with that. But we'll just trim that off mainly in a moment. 
Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna use this as my kind of backup for if I need to change it. Because one thing I know is on my first one is that this actually, when doing it on the spiral, is going to scale down this a little bit. So I compare that to this one, and it's actually about the same size this time. Yes, these are both about the same size. Sometimes this may shrink it down some, but in this case it did not, which is quite handy. So let's go into material mode here to really see. Yeah, so these are both at about the same size, which is good. Let's go back over here. And I'm going to click on just the mesh here, the barbed wire, hit Shift D. You can see as I move it around, it kind of scales off as the origin is moving from where the curve is. I'm going to hit Escape. Then I'm going to hit Apply on this duplicated mesh. And now I just have a basic mesh. So I'm going to move that back to the first, or actually over to the second. Hit Shift, then R and a Y. Rotate this by a 90, on G and then X. And I'm going to trim off a little bit of this just to get rid of this kind of ugly curve here. Okay. So now let's move this up on Z. And we can scale a little bit upon X without distorting it too heavily, depending on how it looks. So let's just scale it just a tad. And I'm going to try my best to prevent clipping. Let's scale it down X some. Um, let's just move it upon X. All right. Let's stay about right here. And then what you can just do to simply add a lot more density to all this is just click it, hit Shift D, and move down. And then you can hit R and rotate on X, but let's go to medium point first. Now let's do that. You can see that kind of spirals it. Once again, Shift D, and then move down, and R, X. I can spiral until I can see it not clipping quite as heavily anymore. So I kind of want to keep these in between so we're getting better kind of placement of our stuff. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So now we can go in and add in some more other barbed wire around here. So let's go back to our second tab here with this mesh. And I think I'm going to move all this now to the fourth layer. And this is why it can be convenient to work in individual scenes per model. So you don't have everything too filled up. And then I'm going to move this and its nerves over to the third layer. That way I can kind of have just these individual strands on while the others are off whenever I want to. So I'm going to go up to the tab here, hierarchy, and turn on just visible layers. And then it shows me just the models of how in each layer I click on, which can be very convenient. So let's click on our curve and then the mesh here. And I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate these. I just need to click on the nerves. It doesn't matter which one, since the old one will be left there. I'm going to go back to uh, material view. And then we're going to go to the other tab. So you can see it's a bit better. So I think for this one, I'm going to move it down to here. And I'm going to delete a few of these segments so I can work with it a bit more easily. The more you have, the more precise control you can have, but it also can become harder to work with. So keep that in mind as you add these in. So I want this to be at about the ground, but not clipping, because this mesh is going to stick a little bit to the ground inside game engine. So maybe let's move. Whoops, I accidentally hit Shift Z, which put in the render mode. Let's hit that and move it around here. Move these up. And let's get this to kind of coil around some. So once again, I'm going to delete quite a few of these vertices here. Just make this easier to work with. So let's select all of these and move this up here. 
and you'll see what I'm kind of going for here in a second. Oh, put the wrong word to see over there. Okay, this should be better. I'm going to delete this for C2. And this one's good. Alright, delete that one. And then click these last two and kind of bend them a bit. And real quick, I'm going to talk on my other ones so I can see how these are. And you can see it becomes a pretty big, messy coil of just barbed wire going on here, which is the look we're going for. It's kind of like these are all resting on top of each other. If you want, you can get in and be very precise and accurate to how everything is laid on top of each other. But in game, even though we're using tiles here, and so it's not going to have perfectly baked beveled, beveled normals in the edges like that, there's going to be a lot of other geometry in game. You may have flowers and grass growing around here, and the lighting is going to change a lot. So although a single model may not look that complex or truly amazing up close using just tile bowls, everything else you're going to have in with the lighting is going to complement it very well and hide any little edges or seams, which look very nice. Let's just bend this around a little bit. All right. So I think I'm happy with that for now. And the nice way of how we're going to be working is we're going to be able to update this over and over. So real quick, let's go back to our other model here and go ahead and UV unwrap this. So I'm going to open the UV image editor. All right. And now I'm going to make sure my scaling is applied on all of these. And can I? No, I cannot. Right. Since these are all using linked data, I can't just apply the rotation scale here. Though that should be fine if I haven't actually applied the scale just yet. Uh, but I have. So let's go ahead and UV unwrap these first. And then I will, actually I won't need to do that. Right, so let's just select these and the ones on the right are not the correct ones. Okay, I have it. So let's just combine these two into a single mesh that make our life easier. And now I can actually hit and apply the scale and then I can turn the mirror back on, it's over there. What I can do is just use the Smart UV Unwrap option, so Smart UV Project, and I don't want it to be stretched the UV bounds. So I'm gonna hit OK, and it placed all the UVs there. And then I'm also going to want to do the same in this, so apply the scale, and hit Smart to UV Project. All right. So now there's a few things we can do here in that to make sure we have the correct texel density. Because you, when you're building assets for games and environments, you want to be aiming for a certain amount of pixels per meter. And then you're going to stay consistent across all your models. That way, one object does not look way too detailed more than another object. Now you can just kind of eyeball the texel density here. So if you imagine that this is a two meter space here, then this is already kind of at the correct text on zero. So if this is two meters, and this is about two meters long, that means I'm getting 1,024 pixels per meter, which is my target goal for this object and anything else I'd be putting into a game that would have this prop in it. And so these would also probably be around the same text density. Now I have an add-on I've downloaded. I'll put a link in the description called the I believe it's called Textual Density Checker. Yes, it is. And it's under MISC here. You have to install it, and you can install it by just dropping in into the user preferences. So I'll put the link for it in below. But what I love about this add on is it gives a really good way to actually check and set Textual Density. So I want to make sure I have exactly 1,024 pixels per meter on this asset. What I can do is say, I'm looking for pixels per meter. My texture size is 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels, and I want to have 1024 pixels per meter. So now if I hit set my text density, and I go in here, you can see it's scaled things a little bit. Like I said, this is already really close to 1024 pixels per meter. 
And so I didn't do much. Though if I were to say I want 512 pixels per meter, I can set it to that, click it, and then hit set my text density. And now it's shrunk it in half. So I'm gonna post about the 10 to the four and hit set. All right. And it's gonna be a similar situation with this one. So yeah, it's shrunken down a little bit. But now we know these assets are precisely using 1,024 pixels per meter, and that's perfect. So I'm going to add a new material here. And I'm just gonna type rusty iron. And for this, I'm actually not going to import the texture and hook that all up. I just need to know that this is where the rusty iron material is going to go when I import that into engine. So I'm gonna change this material to some sort of kind of a orange color just to be able to easily identify it. Let's find that rusty iron. Okay. And with that done, I believe we are ready to export out this mesh and then import that into Unreal Engine. And I'm going to do that in the next segment here. Okay, here I am inside Unreal Engine and I created a new project and I selected with starter content. One thing you'll notice here that's probably different with me from your Unreal Engine, if you are not familiar with it, is I have quite a few other windows down here. More content browsers specifically, which makes it easier for me to navigate. I simply turn these on by going to Window, and then you should be able to locate Content Browser and toggle these on. I like to have all four open while I'm usually working, though for this demonstration, I really don't need this many open, so I'm just going to close that down to just two. Now, first thing I'm going to do before we import our barbed wire trap model is I'm going to create a new level. So I'm going to right click, select level, and I'm just going to call this barbed wire demo. All right, and I'm going to double click this to open it, and I guess I will save selected. And the first thing you know is we are in a dark black void. To fix that, we can go up to search classes and type BP and drag in this sky sphere. And I'm going to go ahead and move around some and place that directly in the center. And I'm going to move around just by right clicking and looking around then using WASD to move around. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our model and see what we need to do to export that in. So I'm going to minimize Unreal Engine and back to our barbed wire here. So what I'm going to do is once I have everything I care about on screen, I'm just going to select everything with A. And it's important that you have just the actual model here, you don't have any other extra mesh to open up. And it's okay that we have the curve selected too, because this won't actually export. But we have these all selected. I'm going to go to File, then Export, FBX. Now, yes, we are on the correct version. Now your export settings here are very important, and I've already created a preset that I like to use called FBX UE4. So let me show you what that is, and you can edit it and change it. So first thing I do is on main, I have just select an object to toggle it on. I have negative Z forward, Y up, and then I have just the mesh toggle on. Because all I care about exporting is the mesh in this case. And then we can go to geometry, and I have apply modifiers. You can either have apply the render settings or not, depending on what you have. That will just use the render settings to have below each modifier. And I'm not exporting any armatures, and I'm not baking any animation. And that's the only thing that's different on here. So I'm going to call this a barbed wire trap. So I'm going to score trap. That hit export to FBX. All right. So now let's go back to our Unreal Engine here. I'm going to right click import the model. So import to game. And so I'll go up to where you have it located in yours. So I have a viewer version folder that has all my scenes I've been working in. And here's our barbed wire trap. So I'm going to select it and hit open. And there's a few things here I want to check whether or not they are on. So for this example, I'm just going to keep Mostly everything the same, I think. I'm going to combine the meshes. So it's all one mesh. Um, and I believe everything else is good. Depending on if you made your UVs or not, you would want to toggle this on or off. You usually always want to make your UVs for lights by hand because Unreal Engine doesn't necessarily do a truly perfect job of generating light map UVs. 
but we're going to be worrying about that for that example. So you can just leave it on. So we'll import all. And we can clear that and just minimize it. And now we have our barbed wire trap here and we have our two materials. So I'm going to create a new folder here called textures. So I'm going to put this as the rusty underscore iron textures. And usually I'd have this quite a bit more organized since we're just doing this one asset. I'm going to let you guys configure your project however you want. I'm going to add a new folder for the Western barbed wire textures. And wire textures. And actually, let me change the name here. I'm very particular with how I like my underscores placed inside my file names. All right. So if we double click this now, it should open up a new window and it's a bit too big. All right, let's minimize that down so it fits. Okay, so here we have our model here and there's a few things going on. Number one is we use a single mesh so we're having back face calling occur here on it. And we're going to fix that in the material. For now, I'm actually going to just close this and focus on importing our materials now. So why don't we start with the barbed wire? So let's go to our Western barbed wire tab here. And then I'm going to open up my Fox organ and find the textures. So depending on which version you download from game textures, you have different maps here. I download the UE4 preset. Though if you want a different version of this texture, we also provide SBSAR. So you can put it in the substance player, then tweak it to make the texture look how you want it to look, and then just export that out. So what I'm going to do for speed sake is drag and drop these straight in. So I'm going to want the opacity, the normal, the MRAO, and then the base color. And I don't care about the other two maps. So drag them, and sometimes you can have to wiggle around a bit for it to get UE4 to detect it. So I dragged and dropped it, and something should be happening. Oh, there it is. All right, let's take a look at these real quick. And I'm going to turn off, actually, these should all be good. I believe I want to turn off the sRGB here on it. So we're going to be using linear color for the MRAO. These are basically three linear grayscale channels all combined to an RGB map. But everything else should be marked correctly. And yes, they are. So now I'm going to use my other content browser here to navigate to the barbed wire material. I'm going to double click it. And then I'm going to minimize the sum so we can see it more easily. All right, now we can see it just a little bit better. Now by default, when we import the material, it did go ahead and put a note here, which I can't seem to grab. All right, there we go. I'm going to delete that base color here. And I'm going to drag in my base color and just plug the white to the base color note here. Now I'm going to drag in the MRAO and this should be marked, if I move this up, as linear color here. So that way each texture is linear, it's not applying any curve to it. So the MRAO, each letter stands for what's in that red, green, blue channel. So M, metalness, roughness, ambient occlusion. So red is our metal, that means green is our roughness, and then blue is our ambient occlusion. All right. Now we need to add in the normal here. Okay, so let's go and plug in the normal to the normal slot here. Then last thing we need to do is drag in the opacity. So let's go ahead and put this into where, right? Opacity is not available yet, so we need to target it as such. So if we go over to here, and I believe it's under blend mode. Yes, currently it's opaque by default. We're gonna put this to masked and then our opacity will mask out the sections we care about. So I'm gonna plug this in here. And now we can see we have it masked, but we wanna make sure this is visible from both sides because currently our back face is going to be taking effect. So here we can toggle on two-sided. Then scroll this down. And now it's actually visible from both sides, All right? Let's go ahead and hit apply. And then we'll save this out. 
Okay, so this material is now done. I'm going to close this and I'm gonna go back to my barbed wire here, open it up, and it should already have it plugged in. So now we can see that we have our barbed wire material here. All right, so now I'm going to add in the rusty iron material and it's gonna be the exact same process. I'm gonna close that, go to our rusty iron here, go to content, go to the rusty iron textures. I'm gonna navigate back here. Let's go to our materials that I've downloaded. I download the rusty anvil iron Unreal 2K bitmap from game textures. And so I wanna grab the base color, the MRAO, and it looks like it's the only two maps this one actually provides. So let's drag and drop these and Hopefully it'll think and do something, there we go. All right, so now we can, once again, get rid of this default color node it also imported, which can be a bit tricky here. Let's delete it, drag in base color, and then go in the base color, and then drag in the MRAO. So let's drag in metal to metal, roughness to roughness, and I don't think this has any ambient occlusion, but we can Let's not plug it in because it might be solid black. And so there we go, we have that material plugged in. I'm gonna hit save. It should update our barbed wire trap here too. All right, let's close that. Go to the barbed wire trap. Okay, and there we have it. It looks like everything is imported, placed in the correct slot. Now, if you didn't import materials, you would have to just create it and then drag and drop them into here but it looks like everything actually came in fine. And now we have a barbed wire trap. And if you don't like these barbed wires, you can always go back and change the UVs up some to swap them out to a different barbed wire material. But other than that, you can create a lot of interesting and unique assets using just a few textures. So this barbed wire trap, I also made a few taint traps. We could use it for fencing, wrapping it up on oak posts or just dragging out a large net. Kind of like a scaffolding that on the ground you'd have soldiers climb underneath. It's quite a bit of fun to work with curves. And with that I'll conclude this tutorial for using barbed wire and importing it into games. So now I can place this into the world and put it in the center. And of course there's no sun so it's actually solid black. But if we were to drag in the sun we'd be able to actually see it. So let's go to lights and drag in our directional light. And why are you down there? Let's put this to zero. Okay, and there it is. We need to add in a bit more, less harsh light here so we can actually see it. And now we have it imported. And that's it.